Good day, mate. Matt, ESC United, your favorite Eurovision channel, and we have to travel far today, my friends. The land down under. Yes, Australia. They've been part of the Eurovision family since 25 years. It's been five years, 2015. That's crazy. So anyway, this is the second year in a row that they actually have a national final. And we get to listen to 10 songs right here, right now for the very first time. I don't know why I refer to myself in plural version. Anyway, the point is I get to listen to the 10 songs for the very first time and I am stoked. And to my Australian friends out there, um, last year, my personal top three after my reaction video ended up being the top three of the national finals. So I'm just saying, if you want to put money down, no, don't do it. I always keep saying that and then I will regret it. Anyway, but I was right last time. Let's see if I'm going to do it this time around as well. So we got 10 songs. So it's a lot of time that I have to spend on this, but I love doing it anyway. So um, this will be my first honest raw impression. I don't know what to expect. So I'm getting my headset ready. Let's get this thing started. Don't judge me. No, I just knocked on my bottle of water. All right, let's do that again. Okay, first up it is, wait a second, I don't need this. This is also my work headset, so I always forget that I don't really need that one. Um, is Iota Life. All right, let's hit play. I feel like this is from like Hedwig and the Angry Inch. I like this song. This is a good start. I love the national final last year. Looks like we're going to continue this time around. I love the message of the song too. I'm in, I'm digging this big time. I love the genre of absolutely. It's a catchier version of the Scissor Sisters. They certainly saved a lot of money on the music video, but that is okay. But I love the song. I don't know if this is a very mainstream song. Like I don't know if a lot of you guys will like it, but I do. Oh, he's. Oh, he's going naked. Oh god, YouTube is going to censor this. He can't do that at Eurovision, to say the least. Alright, I'm going to do the same. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to do it. Good voice. That's a plus already. I, I really like the verses. I did like it and it was intriguing and I was totally into it. I don't know if I really care for the chorus as much as I thought I would. Good voice though. I can hear the, the gospel-y backup singers, they need to crank that up a little as well because that would add a good amount of flavor here because I'm missing that. I'm not completely sold by this arrangement. I wouldn't call it a demo version, but I don't like the drums. That needs to be a little bit more. It's just not quite done right. But that's fixable. That's all fixable. Yeah, the more that thing continues, the less I care. It's not bad, but I don't think it's winning material. Vocally, she it is though. Vocally, absolutely. Oh, she's doing a Mariah there, too. <laughs> so, uh, good job. The song's okay. Okay, I'm waiting for more. Pleasant. A pleasant, absolutely radio-friendly song. Um, li perfect song to listen to while driving in your car to work or just to where you need to be. It's just a little safe it's good production it's slick has a lot of good things about it i just think we've had this you part so many times and i'm not a big fan of that we had that in 2013 with sweden we had that in 2016 with france at some point i'm like i want more than just ooh, you, you, you. but nevertheless it's a good song is it the right one for Eurovision? That is what I'm not convinced of just yet. Wow, everyone is a good singer in uh, Australia, it seems. It's a pleasant song. It's a fairly typical standard ballad. I don't necessarily think it has melodically a whole lot to 
be remembered for, but with songs like that, you wait for the live performance, because if she can deliver like I hope she can, then this could go big, and it's definitely a, a jury pleaser. But I am waiting for a little bit more melodically here, the one that's that has that moment. Yeah, I think the problem I have with the song is like I've heard the song before many, many times. But it's pleasant. Um, it's competent. And besides what I expect to be uh, expect to be great vocals, I don't know if it's enough for me to get excited. I got a big note. No. <laughs> she has a little bit of a Dina Menzel quality to her whole voice as well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I um. Uh, I'm I'm alright with this one. I'm okay. Vanessa Amorosi. I remember her from. I don't know when. Absolutely everybody in the whole wide world. No, wait, that's not her, is it? I think that's her. Oh, this is a good chorus. It's a very interesting arrangement as well. It's good. I guess. I wish there would be more to the verses, but the chorus is very powerful. Gotta crank this up. It's another very um, radio-friendly song. This is it seems to be seems to be the theme this year. Ooh, I like that note. All right, there you go. It's not an easy song to uh, it's a note to pull off live, so we'll have to wait and see if she can do it. It's nice. It's a really nice song, and I feel as I need to listen to it again because I didn't have a strong reaction, but I do like it. Oh, what language is that? Unexpected. Lots of high notes in Australia this year. I do like that they're putting in, I guess, the native language there as well. I don't know. That is so cool. Not by a whole lot, but a little bit at least. Now, it, it feels a little generic melodically. But he sings it well. And I like the vibe of the song too. I wish they would have sw switched up the orchestration a little bit. Like, I would say that the chorus is the weakest part of the song, because everything else, I'm really, really into it. But this... Da -da 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 it's a little generic, but the rest of it, I really like. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All oh, this... There is such a sadness that comes to the song. It has a early days Billy Joel vibe to me. This is a very stripped back song with where emotions will hopefully come out. Oh yeah, this is a very interesting composition. I don't know how the average year is going to um, go uh, feel about this because it's a little... It's such a quiet, peaceful song usually struggle at like national finals but I really like it but this is a very emotional song I'm feeling it I'm absolutely feeling it it's like he's it's very intimate like he's letting us in into his vulnerable state of being life has some raw stuff I'm feel oh gosh I'm not getting emotional this is good <sighs> okay, this is a little bit more, uh, I don't want to call it artsy, but certainly a little bit more of the divisive. Like, this is not going to be for everyone. People either love it or hate it, huh? I thought I was going to dislike this one actually quite a bit, but I am digging the course. As short as it is, I need to pay attention to the words. I really haven't done that. You know, this is definitely out of a lot of people's comfort zone. But for that, I like it. It's original. This part is so good. Yeah. Brotherhood. This is, gets, this is getting better and better the more I listen to it. 
I cannot wait to see this on stage. If she does something very special, this could win me over completely. I think this is so far the most intriguing entry. And I would love for Australia to just take a risk. Don't go with the expected pop friendly or ear friendly sound. Oh. I didn't I didn't think I was going to like this, but I was so wrong. Ah. Another um ballad? Or is it gonna be mid-tempo? You know what I really like about this Australian selection? It's because English is their first language. I I love the messages that they're all they're all so different. I can relate. This song is also a very strip pack song that is very heavily relying on emotions and the meaning of the song. Once again, very fragile. Like I almost feel uncomfortable being this close to him. I'm feeling the song as well. My concern is, is that if you don't speak English or English is not your first language, therefore you're not someone paying close attention to the lyrics, that this song may not really leave an impact. Ah, oh, this... I was hoping this national final is going to suck because last year he had so many good songs that I couldn't choose a favorite, but we're in the same place again. Oh gosh, I love this one too! Uh. <laughs> yes! It's magical too. Australia, this, you're gonna have a difficult task ahead of you. Wow. Just wow. Okay, once again, so I want to give a lot of credit out here to everyone in Australia, the artists. Very little predictable chart friend, I mean chart friendly, like, but average pop music that just relies on catchiness. So um, I am really, really interested in this selection. I'm really impressed. You know, I don't have a bad thing to say about this song either. It's a good song. I don't know if I like it as much as some of the other songs, but this comes down clearly to personal taste. I'm getting a little bit of a uh, beautiful mess vibe from uh, Bulgaria 2017. Not quite, but just a hint, just a touch, a scent. Final judgment on this one I'm also withholding, because this clearly sounds like something that could work really well live. Alright. Alright, it's gonna be tough to pick my favorites here, but let's do it anyway. Alright, let's talk this through. First of all, I am very impressed with the song selection here. And I said before, it, it, I felt as the first half that I listened to was very different from the second half. The first one was a lot more radio-friendly, calm songs to a certain extent. The second half had a little bit more of the outside-of-the-box feel to it. But overall, there is very little predictability here, with some songs more than others. But I love that they're not going for this, you know, let's go with something catchy, clearly just overproduced piece and come up with these songs that are true t to the artist's style and uh, assuming, I mean, I don't know most of them, but it, it felt genuine to me. That is what I should say. So with no further ado, and before I give you my favorites, I keep saying that a lot, but I feel as especially right now here, I will not be with the majority here. So keep in mind that this is my personal ranking and this could number one, easily change because, you know, I haven't seen the performance yet. And number two, I feel as maybe because in the mood I'm in right now and the emotions that I feel right now had a huge impact on my initial ranking because I only listened to them once. The next time it could be very different. So um, <laughs> let's go. I'm going to give you my top five. How about that? Okay, in fifth place, I am going to put Iota, Life. And not because he got naked at the end. <laughs> it's a good song. I find it quirky. I find it, as I said, I like the strange rock alternative vibe. It almost has, again, it reminds me a little bit of Hedwig and the Angry Inches movie that I love in the musical. So um, I'm digging this one. I'm digging this one a lot. And this could, once again, go up quite a bit. Watch it all down based on the live performance, but it is on my radar. And just because you're only in fifth place doesn't mean I don't like it or think it's just okay it's good it's really really good so um 
I'm curious what they're going to come up with um, on the big night. My fourth place is Vanessa Amorosi, Lessons of Love. It's so good to hear from her again. I mean, I'm sure she had a big career in Australia, but you know, the last time I heard from her was absolutely everybody. <laughs> um, so this is a really good polished song. And um, I think out of all the songs in the running, this has probably the most mass appeal. And I'm surprised it's not even in my top three because the other three songs maybe as pointed out, the mood that I'm in spoke to me more. But I love the Vanessa, the chorus of Lessons of Love is fantastic. It is so good, it, and her vocals are out of this world, especially at the very end. I guess I just wish there would have been more with the verses. They took a little while for me to get into it. But other than that, I think this is a great song as well. Therefore, my fourth place. Now, my top three was tough to rank. Um, but I did it anyway, because that's how it goes. Again, disclaimer, can't change. <laughs> Number three for now is Jack Vitkin, I Am King, I Am Queen. And it is arrangement, just the overall song is very stripped back. Very, very um, quiet and ca calm in certain ways, but also very emotional. So it's not necessarily what you may consider a Eurovision friendly song because it heavily relies on emotions and the lyrics. I felt it, it spoke to me, it was fantastic. Jack did such an amazing job, and I would love to see this one at Eurovision actually. But I think this is a pearl, it is wonderful. And um, if this ends up winning, I'll be happy because. It may not be the Euro Club banger that a lot of Eurovision fans are looking for, but I love emotions in my music, and this one has it. So it's getting more and more difficult to rank them. My number two may come as a surprise to a lot of people. Um, it is Didri and Raw Stuff. This was good stuff to me. Um, once again, similar to um, I Am King, I Am Queen, it is very emotional, very simplistic and acoustic. And it is once again, the message behind it and the way he sings it. And out of all the songs tonight, this one, I had the strongest emotional reaction and that counts for something. So I had to put it high up there. Do I expect it to go far in the national final? No, and, but this is not a prediction ranking. This is my personal ranking. And Didri just really, really touched me. Both songs, Jack and Didri, both, Didiri, I call him Didri. Didiri, forgive me. Um, they touched me and could be really the mood that I'm in right now and that I needed to listen to this kind of music. But it was just wonderful. It was a wonderful piece. It is a beautiful piece. And uh, I'm glad I discovered it. So um, second place is pretty fantastic, huh? But I can't believe I'm still in awe by the fact that I put this in first place, but I would love if Australia would send this one as well. And that is Jack Wa Johnsy, or Johns, Rabbit Hole. So unexpected, and I was like, oh, I'm not gonna like this. It's not my kind of music. And boom, I loved it. <laughs> and yes, I was like, the chorus was the most powerful part of it, but I also didn't really pay close attention to the lyrics on this one initially because there was so much going on. I need to listen to it again. But once again, I do think this is so, it would be so different on the Eurovision stage. I would love for Australia to send something that they haven't sent before on music that we don't hear a whole lot at the contest. And I think this one adds so much. I, I, it's amazing if a, a style, a genre like that, that I usually do not care about, wins me over. I mean, that is powerful. That is powerful to me. So yes, this is who I put in number one. So even if your favorites didn't make it onto my, into my list on my top five, fear not. There are lots of good songs in the running and there's not one song I dislike in here. And that is powerful because they usually are. I think this is a really good selection, Australia. Just like last year, which I loved your national final. You know how Eurovision works. You, and, but this one, I really love. It, the music here felt so authentic and believable. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy with this selection. But let me know, who were your favorites? By the way, I don't know who the fan favorites are at this point. I will check that out right after I'm done recording because I don't want to have any kind of impact on my personal opinions because it's so easy for that to happen, right? Leave your thoughts below in the comment section who your favorites were. If you agree or disagree, hit that subscribe button as well. That's always appreciated. And um, have a good day and have a good night or good morning or whatever. <laughs>